Well, things are getting strange. I uh, was driving uh, along back from where I was digging, and I happened to glance in this tree as I was going by, and there's a squirrel. Unfortunately, it's a stuffed squirrel. Somebody stuck it in the fork of a tree. It just cracks me up. All right, well, see, hey, if you go to a garage sale and find a uh, stuffed squirrel for a buck, you might as well go out and replace him in nature. Yeah, I'm back home at this point. Naturally, having read Tom Sawyer, I stopped by Wayne's house and uh, told him I was coming to the house to uh, classify this stuff and run it, so Wayne is here to assist. Either that or he's here to raid the beer in the refrigerator. I don't know. We'll find out that soon. In any case, I thought I'd uh, take a moment and show you how I secure my buckets in the back of the truck, because when you're coming down windy roads, if you've got buckets of material in the back of the truck and they are not somehow secured, you will find dirt and overturned buckets all over your truck bed. So I just go ahead and run a strap, number one, through my uh, little tool bag there, and I run it along through the handles of the buckets, and then the handle of my uh, other tool, tool bucket, shall we say. And uh, that keeps everything nice and organized, and I can race home and not worry about losing any material to a sharp curve. All right. Okay, well, uh, I have just done my first one half of a half bucket of material. I kept them separated as far as which cracks they came out of. And uh, this is the last crack I did. All right, Wayne now has the camera, and I'm going to sit here and see if I can get in the sunshine someplace. That looks like sunshine. And I will do the reveal on this last little portion. And, oh yes, look at the gold show up. Okay, so now this is out of maybe a, what, a gallon of material? Possibly something like that. In any case, let's tap that stuff out of the rest of that silvery stuff. Getting a lot of reflection here. Okay, how about there? All right. There we, go. there we go. Okay, so some decent gold, and that's out of uh, a half of a half bucket of material. All right. So we're off to a pretty good start here. Now Wayne uh, already ran his bucket. I gave him one of the buckets to uh, to run, and he got a bunch. Let's see, that was uh, had more overburden in it, and as a result, I figured uh, that it would just have. Uh, medium to small flake and some fly poop and that's exactly what uh, he had in there he had what six seven eight pieces of no it was a dozen in okay there. all right a dozen flakes and uh, and some fly poop but uh, this is out of this half bucket from the last little crack i worked and that's not bad gold Okay, this is uh, <clears throat> the reveal on my uh, second half bucket, which uh, was full of material, or very close to full of material at the time before classification. And uh, I'll give the camera to Wayne, and I will do the reveal on this bunch of material. This came from a different spot. This was actually the other side of that uh, little rocky ridge, and there was a drop over there, too, so I took some stuff out of there. So, this is... The second reveal into the sunshine, tap it down, 
And even on the top, we start seeing gold. Look at that. Come on, baby. out of the silvery stuff and black sand. And that is okay. There's the gold. And again, that should look pretty good. It was definitely a worthwhile two and a half bucket day. Even if I gave a bucket full of material to Wayne. So life is good for Wayne and I, and another thrilling day in the mother load. What can we say? It just keeps giving and giving and giving. Right. Oh, wait a minute. I still have to do my plus 20s, which I'll do here in just one second. Hopefully, we'll find a plus 20 in there. Oh, Wayne is playing human zoom here, right? <laughs> Okay, we're rolling. All right. Well, I promised to uh, show you some of the homemade tools that I had uh, created for cracking and crevicing. So I will show you these. These are barbecue skewers that I have bent and uh, sharpened, and uh, various sizes, various strengths. Uh, I make sure that I have a nice thick one which can really help with digging out uh, highly compacted material. Right. Then I have a flat one that I bent down so I can drag the material out of a crack. Right. I have a flat one that I bent the other way and that allows me to uh, get into a skinnier section of the crack and let's see what else we got a straight one straight flat one for just digging purposes all right let's go over here and take a look now this is called a riggers bag all right you can get these at harbor freight i think they cost about uh ooh, gosh 14 dollars regularly and they go on sale every once in a while for like seven or eight dollars and uh, they are very very handy because you can put all your various tools here as you see i got a large spoon i got a a long handled spoon with a smaller point i have a couple of iced teaspoons now these are probably what wayne and i use the most and uh, we are always haunting used furniture places and secondhand shops to see if they've got any iced teaspoons because they work like a charm for getting into little cracks and I have a teeny little screwdriver again for getting into the cracks and uh, breaking up material okay make that two teeny screwdrivers and a large screwdriver here's a finer point long screwdriver for getting into cracks all right this is a very handy item. This is a, uh, I use it for a little rock rake, but you can clear a heck of a lot of overburden with just this. This is uh, made of stainless steel. It's real tough. You can't get in and pry on anything with it, otherwise it'll break that end off. But uh, again, a very, very useful tool. Then of course, I have a small bar and Here's another real handy item, and that is a stainless steel scoop. Right. Use this a heck of a lot. Sometimes when I'm digging in a crack, I'll set this further down the crack, and I'll take one of the teaspoons or something, and I'll just fill this up before I take it and put it in my bucket, because otherwise you're trying to 
pull the teaspoon of material and get it all the way up to your bucket. And sometimes, if you're a little shaky, it gets sloppy. All right. One of my standard tools here is a long screwdriver that I've just put a 90 degree angle on. All you do is set it in the vise, hit it with the torch for a minute, and get it nice and red hot and bend it, and then uh, dump it in some water. Here are two. This is a uh, commercially available item, and you'll find them at uh, mining shops. And this is a sucker bulb, and we uh, will put a little water into a crack, and then suck that material out of there in order to clean the crack completely. No crack is really, really clean until you've washed it down with water and sucked the material out. And this is a battery filler from the auto store. Right? And I've taken a piece of, uh, well in this case, aluminum tubing, jammed it down in there so it comes out farther into the actual bulb. So it works just like your snuffer bottle works. Any material drawn up into the, the bulb area, the gold will drop out and not go back down when you squeeze the bulb again. So these are very, very useful items. Wayne and I both have them, and uh, we use them quite a lot. Uh, final, well, let's see, we're getting down here. All right, this is one of the most useful tools we have, just a large serving spoon. All right, uh, you can move a heck of a lot of material with it. You can scrape the bottom of your crack with it. Again, just a great item to have, and you will find yourself going to the big spoon quite often. Getting down in the bag here. Oh, hey, here we go. All right, got to look at this. This is a paint roller for one of the little speedy rollers, all right? All I did was sharpen the end of it. It's not too sharp now. I'm going to have to resharpen it because uh, we use it so much. You can break up compacted material with this. It's got plenty of strength, and you can really, really, really scratch with it. So crack scratching, Wayne and I, again, both have these, and uh, they are worth their weight in Wildcats. Finally, a commercially available item. This I uh, bought uh, for metal detecting, for basically getting down around a target and popping it out of a hole. But this works like a charm for cleaning out fairly small cracks. And uh, again, even Wayne doesn't have one of these. He says the next time I see one, I have to buy one for him in the uh, in a mining shop. And last but not least, we're gonna go with when you are cleaning your bedrock a little broom and dustpan what cost about a dollar at the dollar store or something like that an invaluable item I do keep another brush in there to help clean out the cracks in the bedrock and make sure I've got it completely clean and just brush everything down to the bottom and then scoop it up and then finally got a little crowbar here that I've kind of sharpened one end here so it can be used as a hooking and digging tool also. I, I think it's just about, whoops, there's another one of those. Right, uh, yeah, it just about takes care of it for the old riggers bag. Uh, before I leave, we're going to take a look at this. Wayne and I made this, especially to go into a very, very, very deep slot. All right. This is a chunk of stainless steel bar, and uh, Wayne has sufficient cutting capabilities at his garage. So we notched this end out, gave it a nice point so you can dig with it, you can scoop, you can pull it back through the crack and pull out the rocks and everything like that. Uh, again, an item that we, you know, you, you always need the right tool for the job. All right, and in this case, this is the right tool for that kind of a job. This is a long crack scratcher. If we get into uh, crevices sometimes that are three and four feet deep down between uh, big chunks of bedrock, and when you get way, way down in there, you've got no way to get down and really clean the bottom of those cracks. This was a uh, hot dog cooker, I think from Coleman or somebody like that. Just cut the little hot dog fork off the end of it, bent it, and sharpened it. 
and again one of those things sometimes you need a tool to accomplish the job so that takes care of Rick's rigger bag and I hope that uh, gives somebody a few ideas out there all kinds of neat stuff but uh, it's not too heavy to haul around worst thing in the whole bag is the bar and oh while we're at it let's go over here take a look at what I do with my materials get one of these big carabiners right? Just put everything on a zip tie and I can grab my shovel stick the end of the shovel through this put it over my shoulder and carry uh, you know, a couple of buckets or you know you got both hands free or one hand free and one hand balancing your shovel so uh, again this is one of those things you can 